In the last lecture, we have seen how the relationship between two variables can be measured by calculating how much they are vary together. So now it's come to the point when we're going to calculate a measurement, what we call the correlation coefficient, to show the strength and also the direction of the relationship quantitatively. So this is the formula for the correlation coefficient. The R is a correlation coefficient. This formula consists of two components. So we're going to discuss in detail each of these components. So I'm going to demonstrate how to calculate the correlation coefficient by using an example. Before calculate the correlation coefficients, you have to understand the covariance. So just now in the previous lecture, we already show how to calculate the sum of square cross product. So the variance basically is the sum of square cross product divided by the degree of freedom. Okay, so this is covariance. So it's very similar to variance. So what is different is one of the element here is replaced by the another variable. Calculate how each of the variable vary from their respective mean together. So for correlation coefficient, it's a standardized measurement of relationship. So based on the covariance, we will get the value. And this value will show us the direction, whether it's positive or negative, and also the magnitude of the correlation. So the higher the value, the stronger the relationship. However, the value here is really depend on the measurement unit. So that's the reason why we need to standardize the measurement of the relationship. So the covariance itself is, is not accurate and standard. So what we can do, we can divide the covariance by the standard deviation of each variable. So if you still remember, so this is the standard deviation. So what we have here, we have the standard deviation for the first variable, S, and the standard deviation for the second variable. This is how it looks like. Each of these elements is very important to calculate the R, which is correlation coefficient. So we can simplify it in this way. Okay. So we can multiply these two together, and we will get this. Square the square root, you remove the square and also the square root. And what is remain is the degree of freedom for each of these elements. Then we can cancel out degree of freedom. And at the end, what we, what we have is a correlation coefficient. So the correlation coefficient is a standardized covariance between two variables. And this is a formula how we can calculate it. So this is an example that we use. So we want to investigate the relationship between the body height and body weight of 15 students. So first we collect the data, we organize the data, and then we summarize it in the plot. So the next thing is to calculate the correlation coefficient. So this is a formula. So as you can see, first we have to calculate the deviation of first variable from mean, calculate the deviation for the second variable with their mean. So what you see here, they always repeat is this part, the deviation for each of these variable. So what we can do, we can arrange it in the table. So we have the first variable body height and second variable body rest. So the first thing we need to do is to find the mean of each of these variable. Based on the table, we can calculate the total because the mean is the total of the value for all the observation divided by the number of observation. So what we can do, we can total up for the first variable and then second variable and then divide by the number of observation, 15. Then we will get the mean of the body height. Similarly, we can calculate the mean for the body weight. So the next thing that we need to do is to calculate the deviation. We just minus each of these observations with the respective mean. 
So we can minus 161 cm with 158.9 cm. Then we get 2.1. Okay, so we calculate the deviation of each of the observation with the mean. So we do it for the first variable and also the second variable. After that, we're going to calculate the square cross product. So what we can do, we can just multiply this one, the deviation for the first variable with the second variable. Then we will get the square cross product. After that, we can sum all the value. We can sum all the value and get the sum of square of cross product. So we have already calculated the first element in correlation coefficient. And after that, we need to calculate the square division, so sum of square for each of the variable. So what we can do, we just take the division for the first variable and then square it, we will get the square product. And after that, we calculate for the other variable. Then we get the square product for each of these observation. Okay, for each of these observation. So we just square this value to obtain the first one and square the second variable deviation and then get the second square product. Then after that, we have to sum the square product. Okay. And in this case, we already calculate the second element, which is this one. It's better to do all the calculation and then put all the value in the table. So just in case we make any mistake, we can easily identify them and then correct them. After that, we just put in the value. So we put the sum of square cross product sum of square for the first variable, sum of square for the second variable, and then solve the mathematics. We're going to have a R value, which is the correlation coefficient. Magnitude of the correlation coefficient is not depending on the scale and also the unit of the measurement anymore after we divide with the standard deviation. So this is how we usually report it. So we're going to have a graph and usually on the graph you will see the R value was reported. So what does this number mean? So we're going to discuss in detail. This number show two information. First is the direction of the relationship. Second is the strength of the relationship. Direction of the relationship can be positive or negative. If the direction of the relationship is negative, then there will be a negative sign here. And the negative sign is from the result of the calculation. If this a positive relationship, we, we just leave it as is it. We're not going to put a positive sign. If you have a data that show the pattern in this way, then your R is more likely to be the negative. Okay. Well, if your data have a positive relationship, then your R will be positive. So in this case, relationship between body height and body weight is a positive. So that means that the higher the student, the heavier the, the student. Then the next value they show here is show the strength of the relationship. So we know there's a positive relationship, but we want to know how strong. So the value is range between 0 and 1. So that means that it can be from negative 1 to 1. Okay. So in this case, the strength is 0 0.6. So the maximum possible value for the strength is 1. Okay. And the smallest value for the strength is 0. And the dilation of the relationship will be shown as a sign in front of the value.